103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, January 2nd, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And we, as usual, we have our co-host on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello and welcome to 2022. I'm happy. Yep, yep. Another whole year to, to get to, on the better side of, I'll put it that way. I know, right? Yeah. Our guests today are George from Buffalo. He's going to be joining us here shortly. Boudreaux from Kentucky. Hello and welcome. Uh, we got Red Pirate Higgs, the, the John Richards, and uh, George Brown, two and a half uh, from Brooklyn, is uh, out sick, and he will be out for a couple of three weeks. We wish him the best and I hope he'll feel better soon and come back with us in here maybe next month. Um, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the, only, the feeling that you're the only non-believer in town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, we have a group of over a thousand of us. Uh, we'll tell you more about that particular group, but look for a group in your town. You never know. You might find one. Uh, Wombat, what are we going to be talking about today? What's our topic? Today we're talking about things that are not my problem. And why <laughs> we make it so easy to ignore the plight of other people. Yeah. And specifically, what do we even mean by the other, right? Yeah. But before that we reminds get to me it. of what uh, uh, that Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, he says, uh, uh, um, we don't want them to watch us uh, or see what we're doing. So I'm going to put a spell on them. It's not my problem <laughs> spell. Yeah. So that when they look at us, they think that's not my problem. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I actually had a fun time reading through those books, but yeah, those uh, before, are great. we got a lot of topics to go over today, but before we go into the meat and potatoes, we'll throw it up to on Dread Pirate Hicks for our weekly invocation. All right. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into quitoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles and the sauces and the grog. Whenever and ever. Guys, it's been a really great uh, start to the year for me, at least. Um, I feel so more relaxed after a year of not paying attention to cable news. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My stress is just so much lower than it used to be. And it's not so much stress where it was like, Hey, I'm ignoring cable news. Cause I don't know what crazy stuff the president's saying. And I don't want to, I, I know he's saying crazy stuff, but I'm just not paying attention to it. Now I know he's not. I now I know we have a president that's just boring as hell and not saying anything <laughs> crazy whatsoever. And I can, gladly ignore it and come back like a, like a year later and be like anything crazy he said no it was everything's normal i'm like oh after four <laughs> years and potentially eight of having men have to deal with that it's yeah. just so nice to be able to like yeah. i don't have to i don't have to pay attention to the white house it's yeah. all yeah. it's all good yeah. it's four years of having a loose cannon on a, sh- on a deck of a ship <laughs> that stuff is not my problem <laughs> but we can go into more bases uh Boudreaux, looking forward to the start of the new year anything that uh you want to uh, mention since you're a family man and how'd you spend the, uh, the ball drop? Uh, well, I, I, as, as with most recent years, uh, I'm usually in bed before midnight anyway. Maybe you're too. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm too lame. Uh, but I, I will say over the break, um, the, the, the family, uh, uh, we made a uh, point to watch all of the Tom Holland Spider-Mans. Cause, uh, oh, we, interesting. we hadn't watched okay. homecoming and, um, and, uh, far from home. And, and then yesterday we went to the theaters and saw the, the newest one. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I, I gotta be honest with you. I liked it too. I liked it more than the, uh, the second one, but I still love the homecoming, probably the, my yeah. most favorite one. Oh, really? So like, yeah. it was a spectacle, the, the latest movie and there might be spoilers, but like, yeah. it was, it was just a spectacle seeing what I was seeing. I was just like, I, yes. I would never have believed I would have seen this in a movie. I agree. Yeah, and it was, it was well done. I left more excited 
then I came in. So, I, you know, it was, I rarely have those kinds of neat feelings. Uh, George from all the way from Buffalo, how was your yeah. start to the new year and anything of, of highlights that you want to bring up? Um, no, not really. Uh, not <laughs> terribly exciting, but we had, a, we had good family activities. Uh, but beyond that, didn't do much. Went one ice skating with my granddaughter. That was, Hey, special. that's awesome. That's awesome. Is yeah. it cold or did you go to a rink? To a rink. Ah, okay. Okay. Not bad. Well, Hey, you know, keep it up family time. You know, when I was a kid, birthdays were awesome until I crossed 30 and it's just like, I know what this is. I I've, I've done 30 of these already. Come on. Just, just keep them going. Just keep them going guys. <laughs> John Richards start to the new year resolutions. Anything like that you want to talk about? Well, there's a number of things. Since we had this preamble before we started transmitting, I, um, I, I didn't think of these things, and I've thought of three of them since then. Go for it, go for it. But, but um, uh, just a quick update. We had a great Christmas. I spent most of it trying to get over my latest bout of COVID, which no I way. finally... Yeah, yeah, I finally escaped from it, more or less. I'm pretty much back to normal. So is this the second uh, time you've gotten it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow. It's very popular. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Comeback tour is always great. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to tell you about, because I do a lot of amusement on the social media sites. And so I, I we, were, we were chatting about um, the new year. Hmm. And, I, and, and they were talking about it being, I don't know, 2022 A.D., and I pointed out <laughs> that we don't use that anymore. Right. Know, right. This, this is a theist uh, Facebook group that I'm in. Sure, sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. What is it now? We use CSE now? Is that is that the proper sentence? BCE. Yeah, before, CE. before Common Era. There and then CE for was equivalent for AD. And, and that, that sparked off a big argument because they pointed out that we're still using the same date. So it's still Jesus's time. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun about that. And then I, I floated a, a post, which you mentioned Spider-Man. Hmm. So I, I, I put up there, what's the difference between Jesus and Spider-Man? You know, they, they both have mysterious origins and they, they both have uh, amazing locomotion skills and they do good works. So somebody else pointed out that we never see them both together. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had a bit of fun on the internet. I also ran into an atheist in your, in your great country. Okay. And, and he wants to start a, a group like this. So Interesting. Yeah. I, uh, wow. I suggest that he should apply to join the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour uh, chat, chat room. We'll see you what know, happens. You bring up a weird moment in my post grad life. I was in a lab, and there was a lady who was talking very excited about. Bethlehem and Jerusalem and her trip to like Israel. And she was just, you know, and when I looked from her, she was just like a, a normal looking white girl. So I was just like, you seem really excited about going there. Like, why are you so excited? And she's like, cause that's where Jesus was <laughs> at that point. I was already an atheist. And I was just like, Oh yeah, that's right. Like in my head, it did it. The two bullet points didn't have a line across each other. And she saw that when I said, I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like, and she's just like, you're one of them. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was me. Uh, Dread, yeah. New Year's. Uh, you, I know you came back from the wilderness. You've been yes. picking back cougars left and right. You've been a movie That's star, right. shooting, jumping out of planes. What's going on with you? How's the start to the new year? Well, not too bad. I, uh, I put myself on the scale this morning, and I have nice. lost a total of 40 pounds since oh. October 5th. Powerful, uh, powerful. I'm on yeah, that journey with you, my friend. And that, and that, uh, the 10 days that I was, uh, at the ranch there, uh, it was a pound a day. I was losing. Nice. So, well, that's a well, lot. Well, it's, well, it's minus, it's minus 38 up there. Right. Okay. So, you know, working outside you're, I mean, just to stay warm, you're, you're cooking at thir you know, 3000 calories a day. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're just eating your regular 2000 or 2,500, um, it's, it's not hard to, to, uh, have that weight just kind of melt away as it were. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Literally melt away. Like, yes, yeah, yeah literally. For a year, you want to come back. John, what's up? Uh, what we have here is a new slimming technique. Go and live in a freezer. 
<laughs> <That's right. laughs> George. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Did, did your body bid, uh, budget adjust? That is to say, did you have the same extent of hunger? Uh, yeah, no, I, I pretty much kept to the same routine. I ate lots of eggs because uh, um, those were all supplied. Uh, so farm, farm fresh uh, eggs off the ranch. Uh, they also provided uh, uh, beef, pork, and chicken, and uh, they actually cooked us a goose dinner, the first oh. I've ever had for Christmas. Yeah, they, they cooked us a, a nice goose. Um, so, yeah, it was all around pretty good. But, but you felt you were taking in the same number of calories or not? I, yeah, yeah. So that's a dramatic increase to your workload to still, you know, burn that off with the same number yeah. of calories. That's, that's yeah. an extension. But I never, I never felt hungry. You know, yeah. you know, I take the little snack bars, you know, granola bars and stuff with me. Uh, right. Much of the time I, I spent in a, a side-by-side, -side, a gator um, doing patrols. Um, okay. So, and it was heated. So it wasn't like I was, you know, in minus 38 all the time, but certainly it was a lot more activity than now. I got around, the weirdest question sitting around uh, doing a radio show. You know? <laughs> if this is <laughs> feel free, if you can't, if you can't answer this, that's fine. But like, what is the biggest threat? on a movie set that you're guarding against? Is it like paparazzi or crazy fans that might show up or like actual no, there's, cameras? Uh, in no, so th this wasn't a, a film related one. This, this was a different thing. Um, it's a family, right? Yeah. A family. Yes, exactly. Family with relatives and, you know, sort of the discord that's going on <laughs> amongst them because they're so freaking wealthy. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I mean, it just demonstrates that at that level, it's a curse to be rich. You know what I mean? Because everyone wants what you have and, uh, you know, talk about porch pirates, man. Holy no. crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, I, I can't imagine how rich. So like Will Smith's son, Jaden Smith, was lamenting about how he can't just walk into a Walmart and get like a, like a PlayStation if you wanted a right. PlayStation, like he would have to have to pay someone to do it for him. And he's just like, at a certain point, there's just so many numbers in your bank account that you can't do things anymore. And it's just yeah, like, yeah. I wish I could just like, that's why a lot of people just like truck and just live in Australia and just pretend I'm like, Andrew Dave Chappelle is like, no, mate, I'm one of you guys. He's like, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> Crikey. Crikey, that's me. I was always here. <laughs> like the black Scotsman. That's who I am. Uh, Larry, uh, love to check in on you. How well, has, <clears throat> what's your hopes for the new year? Well, that is better than the last two anyway. There's nowhere to go but up pretty, pretty well. <laughs> Dread, I know where at least some of those pounds went. <laughs> uh, I did gain a few pounds over the Christmas, but uh, oh, hopefully yeah. they'll, they'll go away. Only a few. Um, while I got a, I've been wanting to play, I'm a gamer, been a gamer forever. I've been wanting to play uh, virtual reality games forever. Nice. And I finally gave myself an Oculus quest for Christmas Sweet, Very cool. and I got half-life Alex and I've been spending a lot of time in the virtual reality and I highly recommend it to everybody. If you, if you wanted me to, I could go on the rest of the show about how great it is. So I do want to ask this, yeah. like how that was your first VR game, Half-Life Alex. You didn't no, like my first one. Uh, I, I, I had to work out how to, how to play it on my computer. Cause you got to load it on your computer, start it on your computer and play it on your, uh, and, and I wanted to get into some game before that. And I went into, uh, resident evil four. Oh my God. Um, so I've got that on my computer too, as well. That right. was your first experience in VR resident right. evil. You, well, that is jumping <laughs> straight into the fire. That is jumping straight into the fire. Yeah. Those are scary uh, games. So yeah, a lot of people don't realize this, but horror games are a very popular genre. But it's one thing to play a horror game where it's in front of your screen and you know you're a person sitting in your living room with a control in your hands and you can feel the couch mm -hmm. underneath you. It's yeah. an entirely different experience when the guy with the chainsaw standing behind you and you turn around and he's like, yeah, I'm here. And yeah. like, no. and the big, the big reveal for me was they're as big as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. six foot two. I'm yeah, in the game. I turn around, there's this guy and he's <laughs> there in the room. I'm there with him. He's as tall as them. He's got a chainsaw. No, it's, it's, it's something else. It, it the is. Horror. Mm. The horror. <laughs> it's organs would never be something in the house. To first time uh, of the year. I have a lot of respect for you. <laughs> Boudreaux, what's up? I, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm blown away because I, we played, my wife and I played, uh, resident evil 
in early 2000 when it came out on a, on a really tiny, well, probably big CRT for the Same. time. And, and I mean, I remember playing that game with the lights on and both of us sitting there with the controller. And I mean, I was, I was thrown out of my seat and dogs were jumping out of, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's frightening and I, I can't imagine what it's like in VR. What, what's huh. an Oculus worth? Like how much did it cost? It's like 300 well, right now. It. Yeah, they started at 300. Oh, yeah. that's not bad. Yeah, it really isn't too bad. Mm. The only issue is yeah. uh, if you are anti Facebook, there was a period of time where you had to have a Facebook account to use the Oculus Rift. Now they took that away because there was enough consumer complaints. <clears throat> so there's really no excuse. And I say support VR, <laughs> try it out. Some of my favorite games, there's a game called Dance Central uh, for VR. And it's one thing to dance with a character on your screen, and it's another thing to be in a club surrounded by people cheering you on and there's like a coach dancer right in front of you and you're like just <laughs> mimicking her or his moves and it's like there's eye contact and you're like whoa this is really bizarre and they may like get a little too close to you and you're like oh you're a little too close to me i'm gonna back up and the, it's so bizarre i wow. love it uh, I love one it. thing i wanted to say about <laughs> a scary game um half-life uh, alex hmm. much more scary than, oh yeah than, than, than um way more than uh, the other one, I can't remember. What was the name. Um, well, the, Resident Evil. The scary, Re Resident Evil, right? The scariest uh, thing I've watched was this morning with my daughter when we watched Encanto. Ooh, that's not a scary movie though, right? <laughs> well, what was scary about it was the the quality of the the reality, you know? Ah, <clears throat> the, right. It's, it's moved on enormously right. from the days from the days of Yogi Bear. You know what? <laughs> you you touched on something very good because way back when, when it was just Toy Story and everything was plastic toys, I could accept that. But then mm. around Ratatouille, when they like had yeah. the furry mice on yes. a person's yes. head cooking food, you're like, yes. no. My brain's like, no, I don't want that. That's that yes. that actually kind of grosses me out a little bit. They get, they look yes. too real. They don't look yes. like little puppets anymore. They look like real things, and that food exactly. looks good. Holy crap. All right, guys, we're going to be talking today about uh, justification of abuse against the other and a bunch of other quick topics. I think we can knock out a couple before we go into the half of the show. So here's my thing. I tend to care about the things that I care about. Isn't that weird? <laughs> <laughs> and when bad things happen to the things that I don't care about, whether they are other groups of people or other groups of religions that I have no, no awareness of or anything like that, I kind of comfortably allow that in my ignorance space because I know I can't care about everything. And I would be inundated with nothing but worrying anxiety if I ever tried to. So I have to pick my battles and the ones that I bet pick on are like the, the singular topics in my life that I wake up to. And those are the ones that I keep track of. And so I will pay attention to them with such laser focus that I just don't care about, you know, the abuse that happens to the other, but sometimes the abuse that happens to the other is so much more monumental and may even, you know, trickle down to impact me. And so I know, for example, uh, it's not to jump into the biggest topics first, but like the Taliban taking over Afghanistan again, I have family that's in Pakistan and I worry about them. I don't want them to have to suffer that same thing because they have college educations, they're female, and I don't want them to be their country be targeted next and then them lose opportunities. That would be a huge thing that I'd be constantly worried about, but mm -hmm. it's easy enough in my day-to-day -day life to just ignore that that ever happened in the first place, that I can take the suffering of an entire country or a populace of women from an entire country and just ignore it. And it's scary how easy I can do it. And I wonder, do have any of you guys felt that it was easy for you to ignore abuse against other people? And why, why are we outfitted for that if possible? Um, I'm going to throw the question up to dread. What do you think? Sure. Um, I, I, I actually, I don't find it easy to kind of let it go. Um, I, and, and that's probably just a part of my nature and my personality is that if I see, if I see what I think is wrong or, or people being wronged, I come to their, their, their defense and it's, just kind of like an automatic thing and it doesn't matter what it is and it doesn't matter who it is and it doesn't matter you know um uh what the odds are you know like uh um yeah if it's wrong it's wrong from my point of view and uh i gotta get behind it i mean that's really the essence of why i'm a pastafarian mm. uh george 
Yeah, but uh, uh, Dred, what, uh, then how do you select who you uh, give aid to? What, what uh, the starving people of which country do you prefer? Uh, I guess that's a good question. Um, I, I mean, I don't uh, give money to, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever the groups are that uh, try to support that. I think uh, a lot of the time, uh, most of the money is eaten up in administration so that for every dollar that uh, I might send to uh, one of these uh, causes, uh, 95 cents is eaten up in the administration of trying to deliver the program. So, um, I mean, if I could go there, I would, <laughs> you know, th that'd be a different thing. Right. Yeah. But generally it's, uh, you know, what I can have, what I believe, um, I can offer that will, uh, have an impact. So, you know, if it's a, if it's a cause for which I, I couldn't make a dent, then it's best in my own mind to uh, support those things that I can make a dent given whatever uh, um, talents or skills I might have to, to lend to it. Before we, before we dig further into Dred's uh, POV, I would like to hear from um, everyone. I think, George, how would, you, how would you tackle that question of like, do you find it easy to, to, to not necessarily ignore, but bypass the plight of particularly others so you can focus on current topics that you have. A I'm, afra I'm afraid, I'm afraid I'm guilty of doing it automatically. I mean, you know, we're, we're bombarded with these obvious needs of, of people desperate to continue to survive. Hmm. And, um, I don't, I don't know how I handle it. We do contribute to some causes, but you can't contribute to them all. And I don't know how to handle the, uh, you know, the disparity, the, uh, the choice. I, I, I don't know how it happens. Well, one thing is my wife and I decide these things together. Mm. And sometimes she has a sense for, um, that, uh, for example, um, I, I worry about the plight of American Indians, particularly, uh, the, the desert Indians that live so poorly. And, and I like to contribute to them with things like food baskets and stoves, you know, heating stoves and that sort of thing. Um, but she doesn't, so we have to compromise on that. So mm. that's my, <laughs> that's, that's the only method I know of. Okay. I see, I see something in your back wall there. It uh, looks like a day of American um, yeah. art piece. Yeah. It's, uh, it's several things. It's a bow and arrow and a blow gun. And then, a a picture, I sort of put that together myself. Uh, cool. but this, I, I like to go down to Cherokee country and, and, uh, visit them. And that's where I got some of those things. Uh, and, and, and those are weapons, but they're weapons to stun animals, which will later be clubbed to be eaten and prayed over. So hmm. it's a little different than, uh, than, you know, military type weapons. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, let's see. But it, but it is a real dilemma. You know, who, how, how do you pick your, your charity? Mm -hmm. is, is yeah. I think, I think that's a good question. And it's definitely something I'm going to touch back to because mm -hmm. I, I definitely now see a spectrum between dread you and myself. And I yeah. would love to see John Richards. What, how do you weigh on this? Is it, is it, it's, is it's it something a, automatic? Very, I do. Yeah. It's a very difficult one, isn't it? Because it, no, very few individuals. I'm, I'm thinking of some of the multi-billionaires could have it in their power to actually solve some of these problems. Mm. The rest of us have to do what we can with our meager resources. And I mm -hmm. subscribe to two charities. One is a cancer charity because my first wife died of cancer, and I subscribe to that ever since. And the other one is um, UNICEF, the Children's Fund for you know, Worldwide part of the UN. Mm. <clears throat> so that's what I do, and, and I, I can't do any more. That sort of... Uh, limits my exposure as it were and appeases my conscience because i do that every every month <clears throat> but i wanted to talk about somebody else i met on the internet who has suffered from this abuse for 50 years by being in the word of god sect i don't know if you know that's one of the prosperity gospel jobs and this person <clears throat> has been taught that everything comes from Jesus, so you don't need medication. Yeah. And her friend, similarly indoctrinated, watched a cancer grow for three years 
refused all offers of, you know, medical assistance and calling an ambulance and everything, and eventually died from it in, in a hospice. And the survivor has naturally got survivor's remorse because she's thinking, had I, she's now an atheist, but she's thinking, had I got out of that abusive system 50 years ago, mm. I might have been able to do more mm -hmm. and save this person who is no longer with us. Mm. Yeah. When you look at religion as something that is a disease in its own right, and as an atheist, particularly one that advocates for critical thinking, you look at a world that's mm. by person, uh, like innumerable, billions and billions of people that desperately need what you feel like is your help, right? And, mm. and, who, and who isn't dying from religion today? Like, has there any, has a day passed since in the last couple of millennia where someone hasn't died for some sort of religious talk <laughs> or obfuscation right. of medicine or some higher confidence in something that's not rational whatsoever? It's, mm. it's baffling. And I feel like I couldn't process the amount of help that's needed on a, on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. It would it'd literally be beyond me, but, um, not, to, not to tip my hat, Boudreaux, do you feel like the plight of others is, and I think we have like, uh, seven minutes before we get to the, the, the bottom of the half, but Boudreaux, do you feel like the plight of others, particularly ones that aren't in your circle is something you automatically ignore or something that is easy for you to ignore or Help me fill out that sentence. Yeah, so I, I, uh, well, similar to others here, it, it's it's difficult for sure. But mm. I think it's also kind of sane a little bit to. I mean, you could drive yourself crazy and sure. not sleep at night, and I mean, because there's so much to worry about, and for good reason. Right. And and you know, since I haven't mentioned Sam Harris yet, uh, it's about time. <laughs> no, but and, and I. I think we talked about this last time I was on the show with, with, with givewell.org and, and trying to automate the way you give so that you, John said he gives every month, any way you can automate that process. So you don't have to, you don't have to gear up all the, the passion to do it every month. You just, you decide you're going to give and, and just automate it, set it up to where, you know, you just, you always give. And I think you sitting down, you know, agreeing with, with a wife or a, a, a partner, whatever, whatever is like George is saying, you know, make those decisions, you know, kind of clear headed and, and ready and, and then just kind of automate it. That I think that that's maybe my way of, of kind of combating this because I, and, and I, I guess to, to, to George's point, I, I know I want to give as much as I can to the best charities where that, that charity per dollar figure is, is the best. Um, mm -hmm. Kristen, on the other hand, my wife likes to give locally so that we can kind of see things happening and, and, yeah. and give, and I like that. I, I think a mixture of both is kind of where we've arrived. Um, you know, we like to give to NPR and we like to give to, um, I like to give to CFI, which is the um, center for inquiry, which kind of helps, uh, helps folks in Afghanistan escape. And wow. You know, That's wonderful. So, yeah. yeah. I, I know, think I, I might've mentioned uh, Kiva last time. Uh, I was on, which is the, uh, it gives uh, non-interest or no interest loans to, uh, you know, uh, countries uh, for startups and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, Pastafarians are actually ahead of the Mormons in uh, having... Uh, Shots, Mormons. Having, yeah, exactly. I, I think it's over $4 million uh, that yeah. Pastafarians have uh, uh, given towards this uh, Kiva uh, no interest loan it's what program. they get for spending all that money on their underwear, you know? If they have to, they have to <laughs> get that special underwear. Larry, how do you feel about the subject? And feel free to take us out after, after your response. Sure. But like, the plight of others, <clears throat> do you find it easy to ignore? Do you find it difficult? Is it something automatically that you do? Or is it something that you well of course it's futile. it's harder to ignore when you when you see it and a lot of times society seems to tend to hide it from us so that we're not that aware of it um but of course when you do see it you feel like you need to do something um i have given myself i've given through work uh, but i'm with dread about the waste of money through the overhead of charities uh, however there are good ones doctors without borders uh, i believe red cross is a good one you see them actively working in the field on many disasters. Um, you can give back personally to, to your society. I, I was a big brother, uh, big brothers, big sisters. Um, my younger, my little brother is now about 45, <laughs> but uh, we, uh, I still 
talk to him. I know where he lives and we, we correspond through Facebook, so we haven't lost touch. Um, but the subject really is how easy it is to ignore or harm uh, the other. Right. B simply because they are the other. Maybe we can get into that in the second half. Sure. Um, but I'll go ahead and take us in the break. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio, uh, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for just a moment. ASK was founded in 2002. This means we're just starting on our 20th year. ASK has over a thousand members and we have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's old city at the Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria downtown in Knoxville. To look for us inside at the high top table, we're usually the loudest, happiest group there. We also have a virtual meeting every Tuesday evening. Uh, it's a Zoom meeting and you can email us if you'd like to be a part of that. We'll send you an invitation. Send the email to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Right. Right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Uh, touching off on the subjects of where we left off and the idea of abuse. So, John Richards, uh, would you like to start the convo? Yeah, well, what we've we've done is he sort of morphed the topic into charity, and then the Mormons were mentioned. And I thought you might like this news item because the richest man in Utah has just submitted his resignation to the Mormon Church, claiming it is actively and currently doing harm in the world. Mm, like most churches, <laughs> yes. most religions. Yes. Every religion. I wonder what his severance package was. <laughs> he's, he's actually he's got five billion pounds apparently but he's written them a letter which has been leaked to the public and it says i believe the morning the mormon church has hindered global re global progress in women's rights civil rights and racial equality yeah. and lgbtq plus rights and before we jump in as atheists it's like yeah that's true it's like hey basically most religions are there they're like <laughs> yeah, most religions. Right, it's not just mormonism yeah, 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 sure. yeah. Honest, every yeah. single religion in the world uh well, he, he was yeah. a keen Mormon, you see, so he's focused on them. Sure. And he says, good on him for getting out of a bad club, yeah. a bad situation. He, he's, left the, he's left the church, and he says his former faith should be doing more to help the world and its members with its wealth. Mm -hmm. Instead, I think the church has exploited its members and their need for hope to, re to build temples, shopping malls, cattle ranches, sure. fund investment funds, and own mortgage-backed society uh, securities, rather than alleviating human suffering in or out of the church. Now, that's, that's a good transformation, isn't it? Yeah. And it, it makes me think, because unfortunately, a lot of society misvalues things. You know, we will pay a lot of money for fripperies, you know, entertainment and mm -hmm. entertainers and, and not enough for necessities, for real needs. Um, so it's just misspent money very much. Yeah. What I would say, and I'm going to I'm going to throw in your topic with the, the misuse of money. And then along with Dread Pirates, you know, points where it's like, hey, uh, if there's a problem somewhere, I want to solve it. I feel like I feel the same tenor of dissatisfaction with the way how big corporations, big charities misuse their money in terms of like actually helping those in need, especially religion, which is essentially just selling false hope. Like the main problem is the thing that you're selling, not the things that you tell on top of that. But also there's, there's a very appealing point that George and Boudreaux and Larry are bringing up and that there's so much stuff in the world that I could not possibly put them all on my radar at once. And one of the most, troubling things that someone with empathy has to do is decide where to focus their attention, knowing yeah. that some things are going to be in the blind spots. 
uh, just out of necessity or else everyone would be penniless and, and tired and losing a pound a day because <laughs> they'd be working so hard. Um, I will say this and then we'll get to dread. Um, my, my points are, I think while money has its obvious values, um, there are a lot of other things that we can contribute that do have like a one-to-one offering. And one yeah. big ones is blood. If there's a blood drive near you and if you can get to it, it's a fantastic thing to give because it does help people. And it's not the sort of thing that someone puts in their back pocket and uses to buy a Mercedes with or something like that. It, it's going to go to a good place or it's going to be used for good reasons, either separating plasma, getting more data out, or at least having a backlog or a storage in the event that something does bad happen, they can, they can quickly use it. The second thing would be your time. And so I volunteer at a animal shelter. And I find that it's a lot easy for me to know that I can't help every single dog in that shelter or all the shelters in my town. There's multiple in our city. But if I take, you know, two hours out of my day and I'm inclined to do that, maybe there's someone else in this world or someone else in the city who will also do the same thing too. And I can foster that sort of collective attitude by me doing it, that enough people will be able to help take care of the dogs that are in kennels and, the, and give attention to the cats. My time and my money and my blood are like the three things that I can give. But if you have any, if you have qualms about the money, think about your blood that you got. Think right. about your time because there's so many other things you can do with that time other mm -hmm. than just water dogs. Dred, what's up? Um, well, I was uh, I, I mentioned earlier. I uh, listened to uh, uh, Skeptic Guide to the Universe. It's a, a podcast with uh, Dr. Stephen Novella and Clan. Um, but uh, one of the one of the subjects was about uh, uh, the COVID vaccine. Ooh. And that for, I guess a number had been put to it that for $57 billion, everyone could be vaccinated who want, wanted to be vaccinated. Um, currently the world uh, is about 54% vaccinated, which of course is a, a, a long way from herd immunity uh, globally. Mm. But, um, you know, you think about Bezos and uh, Elon Musk and, and all these billionaires that, you um, that, you know, with a, a bat of the eye could easily help support a fund that would go towards, you know, vaccinating uh, people around the world. And that's certainly a worthwhile cause that uh, I would throw a, uh, some money at, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. I totally hear you. Um, the former boss of Microsoft is doing quite a good job right. in that respect. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not only that, but how do I put this? It's not the famous billionaires that I have a problem with because they tend to be under so much scrutiny that they do actually have a very good uh, presence in a number of different communities and startups mm -hmm. and charities. It's the nameless billionaires that are like the ones who gave George Lucas $2 million or $2 billion. It's like, we want Star Wars. <laughs> Here to check. Don't ask us what our names are. The people who own the Marvel movies. Like there's like these four people who own Marvel that nobody knows the names for who like are signing Ken Kevin Feige's checks and just like, who are these people? It's like, they paid money so that we don't say their names. It's like, Oh, those are the scary guys. Like those are the ones that I'd love to see more evolved in charity, but who knows who they are. Right. right. But like Elon case, Musk is the Joe Bezos, like those guys, they, they offer so much in logistics and, and community. That in that case, awesome. in that case, I'll give a name check to Bill Gates. Cause I didn't mention him before. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Bill Gates also one of the like most charitable, the, the Melinda Bill Gates foundation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Divorce. Golden He's rice. Most Golden rice. Paid. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yep. yeah. Uh, Boudreaux, I'd like to throw a question out at you. Um, so is it possible? And I'm going to throw this out. Is it possible to actually care very much about the plight of a person, but not do any sort of activity to stop it, uh, in the, in the same, in the same place? Like, could you like, man, I feel really bad about injustice. And yes, I know they're being like North Korea. I know that I know they're in a terrible situation, but I can't do anything about it. End of the story. I got other stuff to deal about. Like, can you have those two mind states and activity states hand in hand? Yeah. Or is there an yeah. illogical, irrational thing going on there? Again, I, th I think it comes down to, to, to sanity. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, I would fear if I, if I went down that path, hmm. uh, I mean, there's so many things. When, where do you stop? Where do you right. stop caring? Yeah. You, 
Um, yeah, and, and and I, I think the other thing that's important too is is to break away from this idea of anonymity. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, like giving giving anonymously is not helpful. Take credit for it because if you mm-hmm. take credit for it, other people are going to see you do that, I like and they're going to like they're going to want to do it too. And 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 I mean that's the one thing where you you really should be proud to <laughs> proud to brag about. Proud yeah, yeah. To I love that about. idea. Yeah, they, yeah. they call that they call that reciprocal altruism. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. yeah. I dig. Gosh, it. Sam and, Harris fan over here. Look at this yeah. guy. <laughs> it's like when Pasifarians <laughs> donate, and they're like, Pasifarians do the most. It's like maybe that's that right. Will yeah, absolutely inspire the Mormons to pick it up, and next thing you know, we have a competition where the only yeah. good thing that happens is the yeah, people yeah. who need get more. That's right. It, it, I it's love the it. tide. It's the tide that lifts everyone's boat. Right. I love it. A little competitive oh. altruism. I love that. I love it. I love it. George, I got a question for you. So it's a biology question about caring for the strife of others. You know, spiders, they got to eat bugs. And I feel bad about those bugs, but I also feel bad about starving spiders. Like, it seems like there's not a way for me to care about everything because some things are going to need to be sacrificed in the process of, you know, existence. Like, I, I, if I became a vegan, I'm going to be eating plants and I feel bad for the plants. I wonder if plants had feelings. They probably, I don't want to be eating either. Like where yeah. is it, is it reasonable to draw lines of, well, I'm not going to care about this or I care about it, but I'm still doing it anyway, even though I know it's causing some degree of harm because I need to survive as well. Like, do you, is it okay to draw lines like that? Well, uh, if, if you want to talk in a biological sense, yeah, you can't, fight evolution. You can't fight survival of the fittest. Mm. So it makes those things really unreasonable to talk about. Right. Yeah. Mm, and yeah. I, and I would go a step further and say, these are things uh, based on the questions of morals, right? Okay. Not a que- it's not a question of biology because we all have to live. We all have to eat. We all have to die. Um, uh, and that's, you know, you can't change that, but when it comes to the human condition mm. and a, a moral, you know, standpoint, um, those are, those are things that we can, you know, sort of, uh, do something about, you know, I, I think about justice. If something is unjust, that's what I will uh, spend my time trying to, uh, to help with, but like, you know, unjust on a moral ground that deals yeah. with the human condition, that's but correct. not like, yeah. I'm not going to talk about like, what blade of grass am I going to step on when I walk outside? Like that's, right. that's not something I can care about. I have to focus on these bigger topics and maybe they have a better impact if I focus on strictly these the, things. The, the, the two can cross over. You shouldn't step on the spider. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> or, and, you should, and you shouldn't kick puppies. Depending you know, on um, what the spider is and if it's in my house or not. John Richards. What's up? Uh, I'm a speciesist. Okay. <laughs> I, I think we should. I think we should respect all the other life forms sure, and do our best to look after them. But I still think that humans come first. They're top. Yeah. In, yeah. In my in my view. There's a but, hierarchy of needs, right? Yeah. Don't don't you find it easier to like the hairy spiders? After all, they're more furry than the bald ones, aren't they? So <laughs> cuddlier. Uh, I, I put, I put the, all... the word is glabrous. Um, like <laughs> yes. a black widow is glabrous. Because it has no hair. Glabrous? Say that. Glabrous. G L A B R O U S. Glabrous. Glabrous. Very, very... Larry, you're shaking your head. What's going on here? It means Hello. basically hairy. And, it, and of course, in the plant world, most plants have hairs yes. uh, or yes. trichomes, as they're called. Yep. And so, yeah. Okay. I don't like but, the but, spiders no. that are her, her sweet. Her suit. Yeah. So Larry has been playing a lot of half life. He doesn't want to see another head crab again. He doesn't want to see another giant spider. Larry, I do have a question for you. So like the, uh-huh. the idea that we could ignore the problems of the others. So like, obviously, you know, as atheists, we can look at religion and be like, wow, you know, you are subjugating people, you're misinforming people and it's causing actual harm. Um, now I'm going to throw this out in a weird way, but like, religion isn't the only thing that's separating people in the world. We have like economic barriers, we have racial barriers. And I'm just wondering, like, as an atheist, why are you dedicating all this time to one thing when you couldn't be dedicating it to all these other problems that are separating humanity? Like, 
you were picking well, one from the other. What, what's going uh, on? I mean, you can you can spread your efforts around so much that none of the efforts in any particular Dilute. direction are yeah. doing any good. Right. So yeah, you have you have to pick your battles, pick your wars, and uh, and your causes, and and do what you, you know where your passion takes you. I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think that uh, looking at everything, uh, religion has caused. I mean so much damage and harm and continues to do for thousands of years. And, and, and now even that it's something that I have chosen to, uh, to shine light on, if nothing else, uh, simply illuminate the harm that religion does. And, and it's um, totally man-made. It is. It's something that it, that was going to be my point. Out. Oh, dang it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, all right, Richard, go for it, go for it, go for it. it. Well, it's very simple for me. All the other things are real, you know? Well, there's real disease, there's real drought, there's real starvation, but religion isn't. Right. It's the one thing we literally could get rid of. Yes. At, like, yes. Snippet, Overnight, if we wanted to. we'd be like, yeah. okay, now yeah. what's the next thing that we got? Oh, that's a complicated <clears throat> problem. All right, mm-hmm. all right. Well, now that we're not paying money to this, we can actually fix this. I, I yeah. can totally hear that. It seems like the eat, <clears throat> despite the fact that it's just ingrained, it is the least necessary and yet most one of the most harmful, you know, yes. causes of separation of humanity. Do, do we dare, do we dare uh, consider climate change here? Oh uh, yeah. So Let me tell you something. Uh, I, while I am fully proponent of climate change, and this is probably a little bit more off topic, but I also feel like we have a overpopulation problem hidden as a climate change problem. And I think a lot of the things that we're doing. Well, nature will take care of that. Yeah, <laughs> essentially, like the world isn't going anywhere. It's us. Oh, yeah. When that change. happens, it's like, oh, climate change's gone away, and humanity is only ten percent. Gone with it. it. Used to be yeah. problem Ninety percent of the species. Earth is going through a fever right now, and it's yeah. kind of figure yeah. it out. Boudreaux, but it's what's... gone through them before, and it, it came through fine. The Earth is still here. The species <laughs> die off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a qu- uh, Boudreaux. What's up with you? So I had I had a, a, a point on an earlier topic, but then the the idea of of eliminating all religion came up, and I'd I'd love to see if someone could do the math. Mm. And I know religions do do good; they they generate money and they feed feed the hungry. And don't be wrong; I'm not, I'm not going to pretend like they do zero good. But sure. if you sold every church, all the property, all the land, all the stuff, the jets, everything, you took sold everything that was part of religion and use that money to help how much good could you do um uh, but that, that brings me to my other point though because there's another top piece that we didn't point out here and, and dread's going to call me out on sam harrisism again but <laughs> you, you, there is there's the idea of, of earning to give too like mm. there's there is uh there's logic behind someone you know, doing some great work, inventing something to make a lot of money so that they can give, right? Mm-hmm, there's, mm-hmm. there's, that's an idea too. You don't want to just have a, a, a low paying job and give half your salary. You want a huge paying job and give 80% yeah. of your salary. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was I was listening to uh, uh, Sam uh, Sam Harris's uh, podcast. I, I listen to that regularly, and he recently had and I can't remember the guy's last name, but it's uh, Sam something, and he's uh, uh, the youngest. I think he's twenty nine. Uh, he's a multi billionaire, um, and he made his money in cryptocurrency. But uh, his objective, right from graduation. Um, was to earn enough money to give it all away. And that's what he's been doing. And it's a, if you have a chance to check out some of Sam's uh, uh, podcasts, um, it was a cryptocurrency. It was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but this, and I wish I could remember his name, but uh, yeah, um, a very, very good talk about uh, what it is to earn to give. Just right. like we were talking you know- about. Speaking of cryptocurrency, it reminded me, like, if we did get relig- rid of religion overnight, it's going to be a huge power vacuum. And I feel like crypto is <laughs> probably going to be the next thing in terms of man-made things that that theoretically don't have any value, but we give a lot of value to. It's, it seems a prime target to be like, oh, and, and here's our new thing. It's like, all praise Dogecoin. Um, guys, we're getting close to the end. So how about we get final words from everybody? Sure. And if you'd like to also share your new year's resolutions, um, going ahead, mine would be, you know, you got more than money to give blood and your time. 
And if there's a shelter in need, dog shelter, animal shelter, see if you can't coordinate some time to go over there. You would actually find it a very enjoyable experience. The dogs would love you absolutely well. And I found it to be a really nice way to get in a lot of steps and it fits into my weight loss goals for this year as well. Uh, Dread. Hey, well, I've got, uh, I'm planning on losing 20 more pounds. So that's, that's my resolution. Hopefully I can nice. do that in a month and, or a month and a half, a couple more. St- I'm heading up, uh, to the ranch again on the ninth for another 10 day rotation. And apparently this is a gig that's probably going to go on for at least a year, maybe two years. So, wow. um, yeah, I'm looking forward to summer and spring and, you know, the non-winter seasons, hmm. um, because minus 38 is it's tough (laughs) okay john richards some news resolutions and final thoughts on the show yeah sure well you'll be pleased to hear that here in the uk some of the religions are fizzling out painlessly and if you want you can buy a church and i know several that have been sold and one is now an eye hospital which is a far better use some of them have been some of them have been turned into schools and and such like my daughter goes to a, a school that was formerly a convent not mm. anymore. Very yeah. So, so it, it is happening in uh, some parts of Europe. But uh, yeah, my New Year's resolution is to provide a safe haven in an internet of fear. Oh, we'll wild. get into that when we do some plugs. I love it. I love that, it. That's that's why I'm working on freethought dot city slash hey. Kickstarter. Nice. <laughs> George Buffalo, <laughs> and we'll get more into those plugs right at the very end. But George, uh, last New Year's resolutions, if you have any, and our th- final thoughts on this show. Uh, well, I've just finally officially retired from the university, and so uh, what I'd like to congratulations, uh, congrats, yeah, thank you. Um, it, it it's it is something to be uh, happy about because I've had about a year of acclimating. It's not a sudden sure. shock. Mm, what are you going to sure. do now? Sure. And, but I, I'd like to I'd like to find a place for myself. Uh, um, Maybe in writing, I still give lectures occasionally on the subject of climate change, and maybe I'll get more involved in that. In, that is educating people about climate change or bringing them to the reality of it. Right. Because that brings us closer to maybe adapting, at least mitigating. Maybe. Nice. I love it. Budro, final words and New Year's resolutions. <laughs> I, my news resolution, it never matters because I always end up giving it up for Lent. So I, you know, <laughs> cycle of, of no, uh, two quick things uh, kind of fun for me is I, 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 I go to a, a, a place to work out a gym called Orange Theory and they've got treadmills there. Wait a second. And, that's the name of your band, isn't it? <laughs> orange whip was the band. <laughs> yeah, no, I orange. I just love orange. I guess. Yeah, no, orange whip was the was the band. Uh, orange theory is a, it's a very different kind of workout studio. But that treadmills there, uh, the in the new studio studio go to 15 miles an hour, and I'm working my way up there, and I hit 13 and a half uh, uh, last week. So it was kind of fun. Um, wow, wow. So and, your your yeah. goal is to get up to 15 miles an hour on a treadmill. Yeah. Yep. Like for 30 seconds. It's not, Hey, let's you know. go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> but, but the, the last thing I'll quickly say, and, and George knows this, this story. Um, but again, a good chance to brag about doing, doing something good. Um, my wife won at the university, two things this year, uh, just from filling out surveys, one for getting vaccinated and one for just filling out a survey. One of them is a MacBook. <laughs> like, nice. like a, like a, wow. And, and we're PC people. Uh, yeah. Speaking uh, of religions, let's talk about Apple <laughs> <laughs> that conversation again, <laughs> but, but we're not politically correct, but we're, uh, you know, windows PC people. So yeah. I was like, well, what are we going to do with a MacBook? I mean, right. Sell it. I have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what she did is she wrapped it up and for Christmas, she gave it to George's granddaughter, our niece, oh. who's going off to college next year. Oh, nice. Um, and who really needed one. Um, she also won a hundred dollar gift card to, to um, Barnes and Noble. And so oh, she gave that to the other niece. Oh, nice. <laughs> so they, they got these huge gifts and uh, we pretty much put on the, uh, on the card, uh, you know, from us and karma <laughs> because I don't know, it felt like we were just paying it forward. I love it. I love it. That's great. Larry, uh, new year's resolutions, final thoughts, and then we'll go into plugs. 
I don't have any. I, I, I made a resolution several years ago not to make any more resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. <laughs> and you're doing well. Hey, doing listen, well. did you finish yeah. Resident Evil in VR? Did you finish that game? Did you actually go? No, no. Okay. I've, okay. I've only started. You know. Okay. I hope you make it to the end of Half Life, Alex. I I got spoilers for you otherwise. But yeah. Oh, oh I definitely will. It's, it's worthwhile. Can I ask a quick question before we leave? Oh, how, we're doing some plugs. How is George Brown doing? We'll, oh, he's we'll, doing we'll well. Me, yeah, we'll inform you after the end of the show. Uh, plugs okay. will be Dread Pirate first. What's going on? Okay, uh, you can find my stuff at uh, Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. That's my YouTube channel. I now have 100 subscribers. Thank you very Yay. much, everyone. Um, but uh, now I found out that uh, it, I have to wait until uh, YouTube invites me to customize my channel. I don't uh, just won't get to do it. So check your junk email filter. That's all. That's oh all yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's where you can find me. I do this. Uh, I stream this when I'm on, uh, 8 AM, uh, Pacific standard time. Mm -hmm. So come check it out. All that's automatic, by the way. There's no guy at YouTube who just pushes a button every single time. Someone gets I know. subscribers. <laughs> You're, it's in your email <laughs> inbox. I guarantee it. John right, Richards, yeah. anything you'd like to plug? Well, I've, I've remembered that I actually wrote a book too. Doing. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. I've, I've, kept, I've kept quiet about this, but uh, it's the second book that I've written on the theme of religion. Oh, wait a second. Show anyway. the names of who wrote that book. Well, the, the <laughs> I saw name, a lot of names on there. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the, the author is uh -huh. my pseudonym, Elliot George. Ah. Oh. There's another George. The oh, dreadful, no. Was it the dreadful it, consequences pseudonym. of thinking like a theist? Also, why yeah. is your pseudonym just another yeah, know, it's Anglican a... name? Like at the end of the day, it's not like any, it's not like you named yourself Thunderstick <laughs> Thunderhammer. It's like, oh, it's, it's, it's Pete Brian. It's a, like you put two first names as your, oh, all right. <laughs> I'm really going to freak you, out right now. You, you may have heard of George Eliot, which is the pseudonym of a woman called Mary Evans. And she wrote a book but couldn't get it published because she was female. This is, you know, a couple of uh, hundred years ago. Tip of the hat. Okay. Yeah. So what I've done is I've taken George Eliot and switched it around. Yeah. Mm. So it's a so transparent it's... pseudonym. Your but, actual look, name is two first names too, just saying. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the foreword, I don't know if you can see that. The foreword no, is by it. Alex O'Connor, Cosmic Skeptic. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wonderful. He wrote a long forward for Very me. Cool. Kind of but I really well want to plug, I really want to plug freethought.city slash Kickstarter because we've got this Kickstarter running and we've recently dropped, yesterday, in fact, we dropped, that's a new word for launched or released, uh, a song by Richard Dawkins. That and was yeah. awesome. Awesome thank you. song. Yes. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, yes, Dredd, I saw absolutely. It. Yes. I, sh I shared it. I shared it through the Pastafarian network. So brilliant. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks. The Noodle hands. Network. The Noodle Network. The Noodle. Yeah. <laughs> please, please share. He wrote the lyrics, and my colleague in Australia wrote the music, and I made the video. Yeah. So very yeah. well done. Very thank well you. done. Larry, anything you'd like to plug before we head out? Go for it. Well, uh, if you let's just say if you want to watch my YouTube channel, I have a lot of resources on there, atheism resources. Uh, search for Doubter Five or Larry Rhodes. Uh, I do have a book on um, Amazon as well. And congratulations, John, on getting your book out. That's great. Excellent. Well, that was 2017, yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, my uh, my book is called Atheism: Why It's All. What's it all about? And uh, you can find that on Amazon. Um, if you have any questions for this show, you can send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we'll answer my future shows um, thank you for joining us on digital free thought radio hour remember you can find this show on apple itunes pocket casts amazon podcasts everywhere really uh, just search for digital free thought radio hour and if you're watching this show on youtube be sure to like and subscribe remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Ramen.